Today I'm visiting with Heather Atone, the James T. Bialak Assistant Curator of Native American and Non-Western Art at the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art at the University of Oklahoma. Thank you, Heather, for agreeing to, to visit with us today in the galleries of the museum. Thank you. I think a place to begin, I think, would be how does Native American art fit into the larger picture of Native American history and culture? I know that's a huge question, but, but how do we even begin to start that conversation? The arts for uh, Native America, as they move into the 20th century, one really has to understand what was going on in the 19th century, mm. what sets up where uh, traditional artists were. Of course, all cultures had forms of art um, that they had been doing since time immemorial, that uh, ceramics, painting, um, that uh, basketry. There are many forms, including jewelry, but in the 19th century, the U.S. policies really set up for tribes to be relocated or removed from their traditional homelands. And that interruption of culture had had an effect on the traditional arts productions mm. for many tribes. As, they, as tribes are starting to reestablish themselves, or for those tribes who uh, certainly maintain their traditional homelands, some of the economic development uh, demands that had been placed on them, they were just horrible. I and mean, people were suffering. Um, uh, the allotment process that had given land to individual families and individuals within families had interrupted many traditional systems that supported the creative arts. And so in the 18, at late 1800s, uh, you start to see this shift that happens uh, with the policy to actually just eliminate culture. And one of the places we see that happen is in Fort Marion under Lieutenant Richard Henry Pratt, who coins the phrase, kill the Indian, save the man. Mm -hmm. He coins that phrase um, in response to the warriors who were interred at Fort Marion, Florida, um, as a result of the uh, Indian Wars, and really comes up with this idea that in order to save Native Americans, to make them more American, they need to be taken out of their traditional environments and put into boarding schools. He establishes that idea with federal financial support with the establishment of the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. This happens in, uh, I believe, 1880s, uh, early 1880s. And at that time, uh, there were the removal of children from their traditional families um, and uh, cultural environments to a boarding school. This is the beginning of what establishes uh, a precedent in the United States of missionary schools, federal boarding schools, and that comes into Oklahoma, which is really important for us here at the university.